Hi everyone, this is Manas, your friend and tutor. And guys, I promised you to deliver content on engineering services examination. So here we go. I'm going to be taking up all the problems which had appeared in the year 2017 associated with engineering drawing. So let's kick off with problem number one and here we go. Let us read this carefully and then one by one we'll be working out all the options. So if a thread is wound around a cone starting from a point on the base and brought back to the same point, let us think about a cone. Okay, brought back to the same point. Then the shortest possible length of the thread is equal to, right? So we've got a cone and we have got to start from a point on its base. Let's say we start from here. Okay, then we'll go around the cone and then we'll return to the original position. We need to find what is that shortest distance. Guys, there could be infinite options and let me tell you, you can go like this, go like this, this way, this way, this way and then you can behind, behind this cone, you can uh, track the same surface and then you are going to return and ultimately here only. So its corresponding, its corresponding track originally can be shown like this. Let me rather have a different color, black, it's quite good. So it could be something like this, okay? That is the track followed. Similarly, you can say, well, we can go this way and then we can return from the back side. So it would be something like this. But the question is, we need to find the shortest possible distance of the thread. Well, then in that case, there could be only one option. You know, this point corresponds to this point and this point in the development. So there could only be one option in between, somewhere in between these two. We'll have a profile of the thread or let's say an insect over here, which is going to go around the cone and then return back to its original position. In order to make sure that this is the shortest distance, what we have is a straight line in the development. And that's the correct answer. Okay, if you watch carefully, this development of the cone in fact is the sector of a circle. And in that sector, this line over here is nothing but the chord, isn't it? So this is the right option, largest chord of the development sector, right? So option number C is correct. And this is how you need to frame your mind. You need to uh, <coughs> see the problem in the right direction. Anyway, let's, let's kick off with another problem. This is going to be problem number two. So we have a pentagonal prism lying on HP on one of its rectangular faces. Now try to imagine guys. Okay, and close your eyes and just listen to what I have to say. Just think about a pentagonal prism. Try to think how many rectangular faces that pentagonal prism is going to have. Well, it will have as many as five rectangular faces. Okay, when it is cut by a section plane, the largest possible section thereof has. So we need to work out when this pentagonal prism is cut by a cutting plane. The largest possible section having the number of sides is something which we need to work out, whether it is five, six, seven or eight. Okay. So in order to explain you this phenomena, let me make use of a software and here we go. So guys, watch this carefully. This is a pentagonal prism and which is right now resting on one of its rectangular faces. Okay. Now we're going to cut this. Just watch this carefully. So this is a cutting plane. You can clearly see right? This is cutting it. Okay. So this section, this cutting plane right now is absolutely perpendicular to the HP. <coughs> and you can clearly see that this section over here is having one, two, three, four, five, five sides. You can see, let me just slightly tilt this section. Still having five sides. You can still make a count one, two, three, four, and five. Let us, let us just tilt this further. And once we go beyond this point, something, something drastic happens. What is this? What is this? How many sides does the section now have? It is having one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, guys, I can completely understand. It is very difficult to think of something like this, but you need to train your mind in the right possible direction. Okay. Now the immediate answer, which, which will strike your mind is that the that uh, the option having six edges is the correct option, but it's not. Okay. Let us try to think of it in a different manner. And let me have a plane like this, not like this. Um, let me have it like this. 
let me incline it this way still we can see five edges this is the section one two three four five if we rotate this further here we go here we go let me show that once again this is the threshold and once we go beyond this you can clearly see the total number of sides that this section is having is one two three four five six and seven that means the maximum number of edges that the section will have in case of a what do you call pentagonal prism is seven it's going to be seven edges so let me just mark it okay there you go let's move forward with problem number three it's very interesting the locus of a the locus traced by a point moving along a pendulum okay so there is a link along which there is a point and that point is moving and this pendulum is also rotating you can see when the pendulum oscillates is now guys you can do this with simply with the help of a elimination method you know a helix is formed when when what do you call when a point moves along and around the outermost portion or along the surface of a cylinder that's what you call a cylindrical helix and if that same point moves along and around the cone okay then it forms a conical helix as far as a cycloid is concerned this is obtained when a rolling circle rolls and if you if you mark a point on the perimeter of the rolling circle when it rolls it forms that the locus of that point forms a cycloid as far as an involute is concerned this is associated with either wounding or unwounding of say a string or a wire okay the only option left is a spiral okay so this is one way of reaching the correct option so it has got to be a spiral and let me tell you why spiral is the correct answer so let me just explain you with the help of this figure so we've got a link link say op okay and somewhere along that link we got a point p now this point p has sort of a linear movement along the link now when this link rotates this point will come closer to this origin okay it will come here this distance is uh, what it's going to travel when the link further rotates this link by the way is rotating in the anti clockwise sense you can make a rotation in the clockwise sense also then what will happen it will come further close further close further close and it will come closer and closer until it reaches here right and you can take it the other way also you can take say p1 over here and then you can make the entire stuff when you join all these points when you join all these points there is a special curve that you are going to get and that is what you call spiral so that's the right option let's move forward if a line is inclined to vp okay and parallel to hp think about hp and vp and try to keep a line okay something like this try to keep a line which is inclined to vp it would be something like this isn't it this line right here is inclined to the vertical plane okay which one of the following statements is always correct fine so let me have the views that's the top view and that's the front view and that's the what do you call front view length and we can also call it as elevation length well plan and elevation are civil engineering terms remember this plan is what you call top view elevation is what you call front view so plan length refers to the top view length and elevation length refers to the front view length remember that okay let me just write this so that you can note this down plan is nothing but the top view and elevation is something which is associated with the front view so plan length is top view length and front view length is the elevation length so that's uh, this over here is nothing but the top view or the top view length you can say okay and in the top view length you also see the true length the true length of this line is visible from the top that's true so which one of the options is absolutely correct true length is equal to plan length true length is equal to the plan length top view length is nothing but the plan length well we have reached the conclusion that's the correct answer true length is equal to elevation length you can clearly see this elevation length is actually less than the true length so this is an incorrect option we already know what the right option is this is the right option true length is equal to the plan length this true length can only be seen from the top that is in the plan view that means the plan length shows the true length okay so you don't have to ponder further that's the correct value that we've got no need to worry true length can never be less than the plan length so this true length this is also correct incorrect and this is slightly confusing this option you see 
vertical trace of the line is above xy line if you extend this line okay if i can extend this vp also let me just do this extend this vp also and it would be something like this then on extending this line it would intersect somewhere here this is the vt well that way you can say that this option is also correct well but not always vertical trace of the line is above the xy line this is the xy line above which we have the vertical trace on extending this line it meets the vertical plane at a point and that point is called a trace and since it meets the vertical plane therefore it is a vertical trace but guys again if we put this line in the third quadrant then the same vertical trace will will be obtained below the xy line let me just try to make this if that's possible in the third quadrant if same stuff happens so that's the third quadrant the third quadrant okay if there is if we try to keep a line over here inclined with bp say and we extend this and it meets then if this is the xy line here we'll get the vt below xy line okay and in this case we are getting the uh, vt above the xy line so there are multiple options as far as this particular scenario is concerned okay so that's why this particular option option number 4 is absolutely correct so let's move further okay no need to worry about this here we go okay this one is relatively easy and if you have if you have studied engineering drawing in your first semester or even second semester then this is this is going to be a very easy one all of us have solved this problem radius of a generating circle which is moving inside the directing circle just think about this there is a rolling circle or a generating circle which is moving inside if it had if it moves inside then the locus of a point on the rolling circle is going to be a hypocycloid that's for sure if it moves outside or rolls outside then the locus is got to be an epicycloid fine so one thing is for sure that this is going to be a hypocycloid let me just explain you and with the radius of uh, what do you call the directing circle where is this that it is in a uh, half of the radius of directing circle okay half of the radius of the directing circle fine so let me just make this this is the radius of directing circle and this is the area, this is the sector okay and this is the small radius right this is the radius of what do you call the rolling circle so hypocycloid is basically when this rolls anti clockwise and this if you keep a track of all these points this is what you're going to get okay a smiling curve you can say when you join all these points a smiling curve is something that you are going to get which is popularly known as a hypocycloid you're fine that's that's all right okay so this is what this is what well that's the directing circle and this one over here is the rolling circle and this r is very less than this now what they're trying to say is if the radius of generating circle is half the radius of the directing circle just think about this half the radius okay you can also formulate it like this 360 multiplied by small r over capital r again small r is the radius of a rolling circle or generating circle and capital r is the radius of directing circle and this is half half of what half of directing circles radius and that's r and if you try to this is going to be 2 times of 180 now the this theta that you are going to get is going to be how much 180 degrees and if you try to do this this is what you will get okay then the hypocycloid over here apparently is a straight line this is a hypocycloid but it's a straight line this is a very unique case of a hypocycloid and this is something that we we actually have studied in engineering drawing so the correct option is a straight line that's it Now let's move further. Problem number six, and this is also pretty simple. Let me tell you why. Here we go. So we've got the development. If the development of lateral surface of a cone is a semicircle, so the development of a cone, cone, is a semicircle like this. Okay. So what we basically done is, we cut this cone about this generator with a scissor, cut it, and when you open it and lay it absolutely flat, this is what you get. the angle subtended over here okay is 180 degree well obviously because it has been uh, 
unfolded into a semicircle. That's why it's clearly said. Now, these are the options that we've got. Now, here it is. Theta, this angle theta over here can be worked out using this formula. And this is something that you should drill inside your mind. Whenever you open up, whenever you unfold a coal and lay it absolutely flat, then there is a particular area of a sector of a circle which is having an angle theta is equal to 360 into radius of base over slant height. Over slant height. So let's say this, this distance from here to here, this is the slant height h, right? And this over here is the base radius. And this angle that we, since it is a semicircle, this angle has to be 180 degrees. So this theta is already known to us. So 180 degrees is equal to 360 degrees multiplied by base radius, let's say is r divided by slant height. So this becomes 2. Okay. And when you transfer this h over to the other side, h is going to be equal to twice of r. And 2 times of r is nothing but the diameter itself. That means the slant height is equal to the diameter. Slant height of the cone is equal to the diameter of the base of the cone. So that's the right option. This is how your mind should work. That's it. Problem number 6 done. Let's move to problem number 7. Okay. This is very interesting. Conic sections it is. Conic, a cone is rather resting with its base on HP. Okay. Um, a section parallel to the VP cuts the cone. Right. The section plane is some distance away from the center and does not pass through the apex. Okay, it does not pass through the apex. The true shape of the section is. So there is a cone which is resting with its base on HP. So here we have it. Okay. And a section plane parallel to VP cuts the cone. Now, just try to see this cone. Just try to say this over here, this line that I've made actually is your vertical plane. And this over here is your horizontal plane. You could try to explain this in the simplest of ways. <coughs> it's like this. Okay. It's like this. So we are watching this from here. That's the first quadrant. And you've got a cone over here. Okay. So this is the view that we are getting. So this is the VP and this my friends is the horizontal plane. Right. And there is a cutting plane. Okay, which is parallel to VP. That's why you'll have a plane over here, cutting plane, something like this. This plane and this vertical plane, both of them are appearing as a line. In which view? This is the side view, you can say. Okay, these two are appearing as a line. Don't get confused. So what we would like to know is when when such such a cutting happens, what sort of curve do we get? Okay, let me read that again. The section plane is some distance away from the center. So this is the center or the center line, you can say. Okay, this is what we get. Okay, and we know it's a hyperbola, but what sort of a hyperbola is it? It's, it's, it's a basic hyperbola or, or a rectangular one. Guys, always remember, whenever the cutting plane, okay, whenever the cutting plane cuts the cone perpendicular to the base or parallel to the axis, this is parallel to the axis or perpendicular to the base. And when you look at it from over here, this is the stuff what you're going to get. This is a rectangular hyperbola. Always remember whenever the cutting plane cuts parallel to the axis, okay, without passing through the apex, where cuts parallel to the axis or perpendicular to the base. Again, I'm saying without passing through the apex, then the section that you have is a rectangular hyperbola. So this is the correct answer. But some of guys, some of you guys might be confused as to what then a simple hyperbola is. So let me clarify that doubt. This angle over here is alpha, let's say. So what we do have is a cutting plane like this. Let me show you. If we have a cutting plane like this, and let's say this angle is beta, as long as as long as beta is less than alpha, your answer or the section will always be a hyperbola. When beta becomes zero degrees then it's a rectangular hyperbola. Okay. When beta becomes equal to alpha, that means alpha is associated with this generator. When beta becomes alpha, it would be something like this. This is going to become, this section is going to become absolutely parallel to one generator. When beta is equal to alpha, 
you have a parabola and yeah that's it that's that's everything you needed to know i have never heard about this rectangular hyperbola okay so the only option that i can work out is rectangular hyperbola always remember cutting plane perpendicular to base rectangular hyperbola cutting plane parallel to axis a rectangular hyperbola okay but without passing through the apex it, if it passes through the apex what sort of a section are you going to get just think about this the section that you will get is going to be a triangle just think about it anyway moving moving on which one of the following statements is correct in the development of lateral surfaces of solids the development of a right cone is a triangle well the development of a right cone is not a triangle but but something like this okay sector of a circle you can say so that's wrong triangulation is the recommended method in the development of a prims triangulation guys is a method for the development of transition pieces transition pieces just remember this so this option is also wrong the development of lateral surface of a right circular cylinder is a rectangle well that's true yes when you develop the lateral surface of a cylinder this is what you get a rectangle so that's true and and for development of a prism the method that we use is the parallel line method okay and you don't have to work out this option you know what the right option is that's option c moving on so this is the final one and uh, <clears throat> if you have studied projection of solids and in that also you need to have a little knowledge about suspended solids and here we go we have a square pyramid which is freely suspended from one of the corners so this has this is not corners this is corners of its base then the imaginary line joining that corner with the center of gravity of the pyramid will be so you have a square pyramid okay so on the base of the square pyramid we have a square that means there are four corners so if we lift if we suspend the square pyramid respect to one of the corners then the imaginary line joining that corner with the center of gravity of the pyramid will be okay what sort of angle does it make with the vertical that is something we need to work out so first of all let me tell you something regarding the center of gravity when you speak of a cone cone or even a prism center of gravity is right at the center vertically center that is h by 2 if the height is h it has got to be h by 2 from the base now if if it's a cone or a pyramid then the center of gravity is at a height of h by 4 <coughs> so that's true let's try to take a look at this so here we are that's a square pyramid okay and i'm going to lift this with respect to this point this point now the center will be somewhere here that's the center of gravity or cg if you join the cg with this corner over here okay it would be something like this isn't it now try to lift this say we have a string over here one end of which is in your hand and you try to lift it like this what will happen this is what's going to happen okay that string that string will become absolutely vertical so this is the imaginary line joining one of the corner with the center of gravity and this imaginary line will become absolutely vertical this is something that you need to know guys okay so this one is the right answer okay and as far as mechanics is concerned the entire weight weight will be acting here that is mg if we say the square pyramid is having a mass m then the weight is going to pass through the center of gravity and this weight will be absolutely vertical that's it so guys that was all for today i'll come up with more problems on different topics on engineering drawing associated with ESE examination. This is going to be very beneficial for all of you, and especially for all the four branches: electronics and communication, mechanical, civil, electrical. Guys, this is going to be our life-changing experience for all of you, and this is going to really boost your chances to score more in the preliminary examination. So, guys, uh, let's aim for 500 likes for this video. And again, as I always say, take care, keep learning. I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.